Mr. President, thank you very much for taking time to talk to us. Thank you. You have just announced a drawdown of uh, U.S. troops from Afghanistan. How should the Afghan people perceive this withdrawal? Well, I think what it signals is the success of the surge that we put in uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, and it also signals the seriousness with which we take transition. Uh, you know, in 2009, uh, I announced that we would send an additional 30,000 troops in. And our goal was very specific. We were going to blunt the momentum of the Taliban that was taking on more and more control of the country. And we were going to use that time to make sure that we were training Afghan security forces so that Afghans would have the capacity to uh, secure their own country. Uh, we've made enormous progress during that time. <coughs> and so uh, what we've seen is an additional 100,000 Afghan forces trained. Uh, we've seen uh, areas like Kandahar uh, and Helmand uh, wrested away from the Taliban so that uh, communities can feel more secure and more safe. Uh, and what we now are doing is going to remove 10,000 uh, troops by the end of this year, an additional 23,000 by the end of next summer. We'll get back down to the levels that we were before the surge. And then we'll continue to transition as Afghan forces stand up uh, with the goal of completing this transition by 2014. Beyond 2014, though, uh, we want to make sure that we maintain the strong relationship with the Afghan people and the Afghan government. Uh, we won't have the same military presence, but what we hope on economic uh, and development uh, agendas that we're going to continue to work with uh, Afghans as we have. What kind of impact do you think it'll have on the, uh, on the NATO allies? For example, how can you, would you ensure that the NATO allies themselves don't rush for the exits and, well, and, and in a sense, get, to the, get out of the country before we do? Well, we actually uh, made sure that we consulted closely with our NATO allies before making the decision. Uh, I've subsequently uh, discussed this with uh, the Secretary General of NATO, uh, as well as some of the key contributing countries. And they all recognize that what we did was put in a surge. Uh, we are now going to be removing that surge, but our baseline levels of 68,000 troops will remain even by the end of next year. And we will be able to pace the transition in a way that makes sure that Afghan security forces uh, are able to handle the security needs of their country. So right now, uh, you made your decision based on the situation on the ground. How did you go through that whole thought process? Well, you know, it's a combination of uh, discussions with uh, General Petraeus and the commanders on the ground. Uh, it's also taking into consideration consultation with the Afghan government. Uh, and uh, one of the key uh, issues here is making sure that we uh, strike the right balance, letting the Afghan people know that we want a sovereign Afghanistan that is secure, uh, and we recognize that uh, the more Afghan responsibility uh, exists, the better off everybody's going to be, but also making sure that we don't rush it so quickly that uh, Afghans find themselves uh, overrun once again. And I think that uh, the numbers that we arrived at strike the right balance. It's consistent with a phased transition process, which allows us to still partner with Afghans. But keep in mind that already uh, there are Afghans out there day, every day who are fighting the fight, uh, Afghans who are dying on behalf of their country uh, and their freedom uh, and their dignity. And uh, what we want to make sure of is, is that we continue to be a good partner with that process, but. Uh, we want to also send a signal to the Afghan people, this is your country, ultimately, and you're going to have responsibilities. You mentioned the Afghan government, and President Karzai has been quite critical of the United States and NATO. Um, are you frustrated by such statements, and, and, and what kind of ally has he been? Well, overall, President Karzai, uh, I think, has the same strategic interest that we have, which is a, a sovereign and secure Afghan government that is able to determine its own destiny, uh, and sees the international community in general, and the United States in particular, as a strong partner that can support Afghan aspirations. Uh, obviously, there are going to be tensions in a difficult environment where uh, we have a large number of uh, foreign troops inside a country. It is true that uh, you know, there have been times where the tactics on the ground day to day result in tensions, but overall, 
his interest in making sure that Afghanistan is not a safe haven for terrorists, that uh, there uh, is a adherence to the Afghan Constitution. Uh, those commitments that he's made uh, are ones that are entirely consistent with what I see as uh, U.S. interest. You mentioned, we mentioned, we've talked about the European allies, NATO, and uh, as you know, there is a, a weariness of war fatigue in Europe. And uh, do you sense the same war fatigue here, and what do you do to, to, to take care of such a uh, Weariness. Well, uh, look, uh, there's no doubt that uh, after almost 10 years of war in Afghanistan, that the toll in terms of lives lost and money spent uh, is going to wear on people. Uh, the good news is that we are transitioning from a position of strength. Uh, because of the surge, because of the fact that we were able to blunt the momentum of the Taliban, because of the security gains that we've made and the advances we've seen with Afghan security forces, uh, I think both the American people and the, all the allies that I talk to want to make sure that we, will, we are finishing the job, that we are turning over to uh, the Afghans a, a secure country uh, that they can sustain. And we want to do so in a cooperative manner that is respectful of Afghan law and Afghan security. But we also want to make sure that uh, uh, we don't uh, abandon uh, a cause that uh, we invested very heavily in. And that was a, my first question. You don't think that, there, that some, some segments of the Afghan people will see it as abandonment? I don't think so. I, I mean, keep in mind, uh, we're talking about 10,000 troops by the end of this year, uh, an additional 23,000 by the end of next summer, uh, and we'll still have 68,000 U.S. troops there in addition to uh, all the uh, coalition partner troops. So. Uh, there's still going to be a substantial presence, uh, but what it does signal is, is that Afghans are slowly taking more and more responsibility. As you know, reconciliation is a word that is used in, in Afghanistan. How do you define reconciliation, and what is the U.S. role in that process, and does it support negotiations with at least some elements of the Taliban? Uh, what we've said consistently is that there has to be a political se settlement to bring about genuine peace in the region. Uh, but the terms of that political settlement are important, uh, and we've been very clear in our criteria. Uh, we will uh, encourage the Afghans, and we ourselves will talk to anybody, but they are going to have to break ties with al-Qaeda. They're going to have to uh, pledge to abide by the Afghan constitution, and they'll have to cease violence as a means of bringing about political power. If uh, they take those steps, then uh, I think that there's a strong possibility of creating the kind of political settlement uh, that would uh, finally give Afghans relief from uh, 30 years of war. Uh, but it's important that our military efforts continue to support uh, these political efforts, and that means that uh, the Taliban and others understand that they're not simply going to uh, be able to uh, outlast us, uh, that we're going to be in a position to continue to put pressure on them uh, to, to make sure that they come to the negotiating table uh, with a spirit of uh, uh, observing uh, Afghan constitutional law. Inevitably, when one talks about Afghanistan, one talks about Pakistan. Um, and now that we're beginning the withdrawal from Afghanistan, uh, has the focus now shifted on Pakistan? Well, I think the focus uh, shifted to Pakistan, uh, or at least uh, my view, two years ago was that you had to look at Afghanistan and Pakistan as part of a similar problem. That border region in which extremist elements uh, had taken control and were providing al-Qaeda safe haven from which to launch attacks into Afghanistan, into Pakistan, and around the world. Uh, and so we've sought uh, to strengthen cooperation with Pakistan. Uh, obviously, uh, that has created tensions as well, but overall, Pakistan has cooperated with us in our intelligence collection efforts, in striking at high-value targets within Pakistan. Uh, we think that uh, no country uh, has suffered more from terrorist attacks than Pakistan. And so this is entirely in their self-interest. Uh, and we think that Pakistan has a legitimate role to play as part of the reconciliation process. I know President Karzai, in his travels to Islamabad, uh, uh, agreed that uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, along with the United States, should uh, create a, a core group that can uh, try to discuss how we proceed in this process. But uh, Pakistan is, uh, has 
not only uh, a responsibility, but also I think a deep interest uh, in dealing with the terrorist elements that are still uh, in their territory. But it's quite clear that relationships, the relationship between the United States and Pakistan has cooled. How do you, how do you plan to repair that, uh, that deteriorating relationship between Islamabad and, and Washington? Well, I think what's happened is, is that uh, the relationship has become more honest over time. Uh, and that raises some differences uh, that are real. Uh, and obviously, uh, the operation to take out uh, Osama bin Laden created additional tensions. Uh, but I had always been very clear to Pakistan that if we ever found him and had a shot, uh, that we would take it. Uh, uh, we think that if Pakistan recognizes uh, the threat to its sovereignty that comes out of the extremists in its midst, uh, that there's no reason why we can't work cooperatively uh, to make sure that uh, both uh, U.S. security interests, Pakistani security interests, and Afghan security interests uh, converge. Does, uh, do you think that Pakistan has to uh, play a greater role in, uh, in, against terrorism? Well, I think that Pakistan uh, has always seen terrorism as either a problem for somebody else uh, or uh, have seen elements of the Taliban as a hedge in terms of uh, their influence within Afghanistan. And what we've suggested to Pakistan is that uh, not only is, does terrorism threaten Pakistan more than just about any other country, uh, and not only does it strain its relations with its neighbors and with uh, uh, friends like the United States, uh, but that if it is having a direct relationship with the Afghan government that is constructive, uh, that there's no reason for them to see uh, the Taliban uh, as a hedge against Afghanistan. Instead, they should see the Afghan government as a partner that they can work with. Coming back to, coming back to Afghanistan, uh, do you think that the European allies should do more? Because that has been, as you know, some uh, leitmotif of Secretary Gates, and especially yeah. in the last uh, couple of weeks, very critical of what the, what the Europeans and the NATO has been doing. And do, can they do or should yeah. they do more? I think the sacrifices that, uh, that our European allies have made in Afghanistan have been extraordinary. Uh, I mean, if you look at uh, the number of British troops who have suffered extraordinary casualties, uh, if you look at uh, the French, uh, the Italians, the, the Dutch, all of whom uh, have lost uh, significant numbers of lives. If you look at many of the Central uh, and Eastern European states uh, who have substantial numbers, in some ways they're punching above their weight compared to their overall uh, uh, you know, military uh, strength. Uh, you know, we've been very impressed with what they've been able to do. Now, uh, what I th think is true is, is that uh, there are larger questions about uh, where we go as uh, the NATO role evolves, uh, and as all of us feel significant pressures on our military budgets. And I think uh, Secretary Gates was speaking less about uh, European participation in Afghanistan, which has been actually quite robust uh, and sustained, but rather uh, as we think about uh, future operations and future capacity, uh, is Europe uh, going to recognize that uh, it has to be uh, a full partner uh, with us in NATO operations. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned military budgets, and uh, I'm sure that one of your considerations for, the, uh, for your withdrawal uh, policy is, is the, cost, the cost of the war. And it's a broader question, is to what extent does the current budget crisis drive your foreign policy in terms of what the U.S. can and can't do? Well, you know, the truth is that uh, these considerations were not based on uh, budgetary calculations. They were based on a strategy that I had laid out 18 months ago and that uh, I wanted to make sure we abided by because I had made a commitment to the American people that this surge would only uh, last for 18 to 24 months. Uh, so first and foremost, it was driven by uh, the strategic recognition that uh, the only way for us to have a secure Pakistan, uh, secure Afghanistan over the long term is to make sure that Afghans have capacity and that uh, we can't uh, patrol villages and uh, police their streets. Uh, ultimately, Afghans have to do that. Uh, now, what is no doubt true is that the United States has carried an enormous burden 
uh, financially from not only the Afghan war but the Iraq war. And one of the arguments that I made in talking to the American people about this drawdown is that our strength, our power, has always been based uh, first and foremost on our own economic strength and prosperity. Uh, and we have to be more judicious in how we project power. Uh, that's good strategy. It's good for our national security. Uh, it happens also to be good for our budget. Mr. President, thank you for your time. I really enjoyed it. Thank, thank you. you.